Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're well, and I hope you've had a great day today. Welcome back to Nerd News, and today we're going to be looking at NPR. And Evan, and Evan, you asked, why are you on NP talking about NPR on Nerd News? This isn't a uh, a, a real-world blog bill channel. We don't touch grass here. No, ladies and gentlemen, NPR has put out a best games of 2024 so far. And given that when I think about NPR, I think about, you know... My parent, like shit, like shit, my parents listening to in the car, you know. I it, the, the NPR to me does not invoke taste of the youths. Now, granted, most people who play games are in their twenties and thirties now, so that this is you know probably a good point. But the feeling is still there, and so therefore, I will judge. This is by James Perkins Mastromino from NPR. Uh, and I take it he probably surveyed his, uh, his, um, co-workers that, that game. So, let's take a little look at the games that they have. So the first row is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, Stellar Blade, and Persona 3 Reloaded. Now, um, uh, Relink is a JRPG that seems to have pretty good artwork. Um, I haven't heard much about it, so I can't really give a judgment on this. Stellar Blade and Persona 3, on the other hand, stuff, Persona is a your typical, you know, Wii RPG, JRPG masterpiece. Fair enough. And Stellar Blade, um... The only thing I know about Stellar Blade is that it's a souls borny type of game. And that, like, the worst people on the internet were using it as like a cudgel to like shit on like women and you know lefties and shit so but from everything i hear outside of like you know again the worst human beings using it as a cudgel uh in in their culture war bullshit it's actually from what i hear a pretty damn good game so you know props so i'm i'm, I'm all for it the next line is Little Kitty, Big City, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and like and like a Dragon, Infinite Well. So, Little Kitty, Big City is actually a game that I want to play. It looks really adorable. It looks like kind of like a more gentle stray. Uh, stray. <laughs> um, and I uh, and also it's a black cat, like the cat, like Nico Man's the uh, cat we have here at the house. Uh, my girlfriend's first cat, and a cat I care about very, very much. Uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, uh, which is a side-scrolling action game. Uh, that's definitely indicative of folks' age, as well as like a Dragon Infinite Wall. You know, the um the uh, uh Yakuza based games are quite good. Um and while they're not my cup of tea necessarily, I do see how people enjoy them to that degree. So uh so far, so good. Like I like no like I don't have I haven't seen any like piss poor quality or like um you know smooth brain takes on like what like the best games so far are now the question is is this going to be actually a curated list or is this them just going to list at all the games that really all the games worth a damn that have released in 2024 uh crow country Bellatro, and llamasoft the jeff minster store minter story i've not actually heard of llamasoft so i can't really give a thing about that it looks like an interesting like an interesting eddie game uh Bellatro is from what i hear basically crack i haven't had a chance to try it but some friends of mine uh liked it a lot i would like to give it a shot myself and crow country i hear is actually a pretty cute but nonetheless scary silent hill inspired um horror game with a uh, pretty cool like vintage graphics um definitely if you like the silent hill games definitely give that a shot um, I've heard good, really good things, and I definitely need to play Bellatro given my YouTube channel's pedigree as a as a uh, TCG card game player. Next up, we have Tekken Eight, Angerfoot, and Vandal Tale: A League of Legends Story. Vandal Tale is a crafting RPG, Lisa said, in the esports sensation League of Legends. Interesting. You play as a knitting obsessed Yordle. Oh, that's cute. I actually think that's really awesome. Honestly, I might unironically give that a shot. That actually looks, sounds like kind of cute. Um, Angerfoot uh, is basically golden, uh, golden eye, sneakerhead, fight, tons of people, map base. Looks interesting nonetheless. Uh, Tekken 8 is Tekken 8. Again, not like I, I will say I'm actually pleasantly surprised so far looking through their list. Um, I've actually found some games that I kind of want to try myself. Looks pretty cool. 
Uh, we have Astra. It's a VR game. Don't worry about it. Uh, Stardew Valley. Uh, Stardew Valley, I think, is on this list because they he released the 6.1 update. Uh, 1.6 update, I mean to say. Which has breathed a level of new life into the game. I've been playing Stardew Valley incessantly. Definitely worth playing. And the last one is Solium Infernium, which is applying board game principles to game design. It's uh, basically a tactics tabletop game based in hell. Uh, I like I like things like Risk, so I might give it a shot. We'll see. Moving on, we have Splatoon. Uh, meh, Animal Well, which is a um, is a, uh, a puzzle platformer, and with excellent art. I also love how I, uh, how like some of how the capybaras look. It's a beautifully designed pixel art game that that looks cute as shit. And then Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. I don't need to say anything about that. Um, people were ranting and raving about that game. Next up, we have Ari's Conflict Collapse in the Reach, Arkham Horror LCG, Feast of the Hemlock Veil, vale, and Hades 2 Early Access. So Hades 2 Early Access, like obviously Hades 1 was, was goaded. Hades 2 is good too. Uh, the the Arkham Horror game is just like a physical TCG that, that we're talking about, which I think is actually pretty cool that they actually added um, tabletop games to um this video game list, which I think is uh, really cool. Same thing with Arts, it's also a tabletop. Uh, Dread Delusion, which is kind of like a Dark Souls-y type of game with Morrowind-esque graphics. Pretty cool, I like it. Botany Manor, Manor, which is another cozy game. And Home Safety Hotline, which is a 19, which is like a uh, like a point-and-click event. Not a point -and -click, it's kind of like a... Um, um, it's an old computer game where you like go through menus and stuff. It looks it looks interesting. Um, probably not my thing. If you like things like uh, um, Portal Help Desk, it's probably up your alley. Uh, we're going to ignore another VR game, uh, Pacific Drive. I thought that came out last year. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I think I I think they might. I think while yes, they're just. God, there are a lot of games that came out this year, but thankfully it's not as much as I thought. So we're going to. I thought that the, uh, I thought that the length. Sorry, I had to sneeze. I thought that the length of the page was indicative of how many there were going to be, but actually it's not as bad. So we're just going to do a quick hype around, and I'm going to point out some things that I know and can speak about. Pacific Drive, a driving sim with horror at elements, read only memories, Neuro Driver, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree. For those who like catch the streams. Uh, you guys will know that I've been playing this non-stop. I am incessant. I'm in love with it. Shadow of the Air Tree is great, and I'm currently playing through the Shadow of the Air Tree for the third time on my 44th journey through the Lands Between. Um, Manor Lords, which is, I think, a, a city builder re RTS medieval life simulator. Uh, I hear I hear nothing but good things, and uh, I actually plan on turning myself as someone who enjoys Age of Empires 4 quite a lot. I definitely want to give it a shot. Uh, we, next up we have, uh, oh, that looks interesting, Crypt Master. It's a, uh, black and white render, um, a puzzle RPG. Uh, and if I remember correctly, you have, it's a word-based game where you have to use, um, you basically play Scrabble to do combat encounters and interact with everything in the game. It's actually, uh, pretty cool, I think. Uh, next up we have Helldivers 2. Obviously, Helldivers 2 was great. Um, Helldivers 2 is now settled. People are saying that it's dying. It's not dying. It's it's the 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 amount of people that are going to play it long term and regularly have set it's settled down to those numbers. Um, Helldivers 2 is going to be around for a while, and there's and whenever they release cool new shit, we'll probably hop back in. I feel so I will. And we have Dawn Trail. I I want to like Final Fantasy 14 very badly. But I just do not enjoy tab targeting. I'm sorry, I just couldn't get in like as much as I tried to. Uh, Timberborn was actually something that was announced a couple years ago during the Game Awards that is now in early access. It's something that I actually want to give a shot. It's a uh, um, it's a Sim City esque type of builder, but you use beaver, but with beavers. It's very very cute and kind of like the uh, concept of it. Uh, we have. Princess Peach Showtime, which is, you know, a Princess Peach exclusive game. Um, it has good replayability, and I love the design Peach has in it. 
If Destiny 2, the final shape, it's Destiny, ignore it. Um, I'm sorry, to Destiny fans. I just, you know, y'all just seem to have Stockholm Syndrome. I'm sorry. And last but not least, uh, not last but not least, we have Final Fantasy 7 for birth. I'm not a huge Final Fantasy 7 fan. I feel like I should probably go play the original before I play the remake, but though people might disagree with me on that. And last but not least, uh, which in their list, which I completely agree with, is another Grand's Treasure, which is a crustacean underwater rogue uh, um, Souls-like game that is, I think if, if you are somebody who wants to get your partner or equivalent into souls Borny type of games, another Crab's Treasure is the perfect way to do it. Another Crab's Treasure has accessibility options that range from making it the game a little easier, you a little tankier, you not losing your, your souls basically when you die, to just giving you the ability to insta-kill any enemy you, you hit. Which I think, honestly, I think that itself is, you know, all of that, adding that level of accessibility makes it so you can enjoy the game it's in using these accessibility options, but remove your ability to get achievements, which I think is very nice. Um, it was, it's honestly a game that I would probably put in my girlfriend's hands if I wanted to genuinely try and get her into uh, souls born type of games, and I think that for anybody there, it's generally a wonderful adventure game that's worth the time. It's quite cute. I will. I apologize for my looking off screen for my YouTube watchers at present. I am I I got sunburned out in Ocean City, Maryland, a couple of weeks ago, and my skin is finally peeling, and it's been peeling nonstop for days. And my autism makes me say it must be peeled. On that note, um, I kind of like their list. There's a few games that I spot. I I, I, I skipped over, but yeah. Good job, NPR. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg/10. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.